Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So I will read the Bible here. I don't know if I can use this. Can I use this? So my name is Obi Daniel. I was also introduced to um, the Myers Bible course by Mr. Dan Webster during my early teens, so that was around 12, 13 years. And just like everyone, I started with the Word of God, which is the first um, lesson in the first series. And I remember the day I was solving or really going through that course. I didn't go to school. I wasn't able to go to school that day. So I really took time throughout the entire day to go through the course. And at my age, I found it very interesting because it really helped me to dive in depth. I think the first one is called the Word of God. It helped me to dive in depth into the Word of God and I found that very interesting because it was very helpful. And thankfully, I was able to go through each and every question. And at the end of the day, I got hungry on that course. It was a very beautiful experience. Since then, I also went through to the stages, course two, course three, and I remember one time during school worship in junior high school, we were asked, some of the students were asked to come like teach or preach. And so what I did was I just took one of the Bible courses, which was the, um, I think the subject was about sin and how to take it to the world. So I took that and then I prepared my message from that. So I went to school, I shared with the students about the origin of sin, the impact it has had on humanity and all that. And I found it very useful. But then this um, teacher who organized this worship, um, or this sermon, said, started um, giving his comments about the origin of sin and all that. And he was saying, um, sin came to the world. We, we all know the story of Adam and Eve and how they uh, disobeyed God by taking the fruits which God had forbidden them from taking. But then this teacher was saying, okay, it wasn't really a fruit, it wasn't really a tree, but it was figurative. It was about them being intimate and all that. And I was like, I, uh, it's like I'm kind of twisting my message here. I think. He himself needed one Bible course because his message or his understanding of the origin of sin itself was kind of distorted. And so I really find this um, this program or this minus Bible course is to be very educating spiritually and men mentally because there are so many people out there who do not know the truth, or they rely on their pastors or their leaders to give them, feed them with the word of God, right? Most of the times, these leaders or preachers too do not have knowledge or full knowledge of the truth. And so it's easy to really lead people astray. And that is very unfortunate. When you go to um, Hebrews 4 verse 12, it says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing into the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God itself is living. It's not like any other book published by man. Like, um, lately, I was doing a course about um, the way to that the topic. And it was one thing I got from that was the word of God is inexhaustible. That means that in regardless of the number of times you go through the word of God, you get a new or a fresh revelation. So it's not like any science book or story book where you get the same thing over and over. But the word of God keeps refreshing you with different interpretations, different revelations. The word of God is living and powerful, and that is. For every Christian, that should be the basis. The basic that should be the foundation. Not about what someone is saying, what my preacher is saying. Because we live in a society where people believe their preachers more than the word of God. And that is very unfortunate. 
we see in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Let me quickly go into the Acts 17, 11. And I read, Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures, being to see if these things were. So these were people who Paul and the apostles had preached to. But they went back to the word. Searched it daily to see whether what they were being taught were truth. And that is something we do not see in our society. Like I'm saying, people rely on the word of their preachers more than the word of God. And that is really distorted the truth. And so, because of that, people are left in the dark. When you read 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 2, it talks about the coming back of. Jesus Christ, the we all know that we are in the end times. Second Thessalonians, sorry, first Thessalonians 5 verse 2. Now we it says verse 2. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The day of the Lord, the return of Christ is coming as a thief in the night. So in the night, we know that there is darkness all the time in the night. But then when we go to verse 4, it says, But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. You are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. Um, yeah, that is verse 4. So you are not in darkness. Now, is it that those who, are, those who do not have the word or the truth are in darkness. And we know that Jesus Christ referred to those who do not know the truth as blind people. So is it that you are blind and in darkness? Or is it that your eyes are open but still in darkness? So those two are the same. Whether you are blind and in darkness or your eyes are open, you are still in darkness. And the opposite of that is your eyes are open and you're in the light. So is it that dark or light? Light or dark? And he's saying that you brothers are not in the dark, you are in the light. So if the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night, then those who are in the truth will not be overtaken because they are not in the night, they are in the light. And so if I see this course or this program as an assistant, a guide to help you really delve into the scriptures, to know the truth of the word of God, because there is no exceptions, there are no cuts and paste of, okay, let's jump over this topic and go to this. As we see normal in our daily life, you know, when someone is Let's say you go to a church where there is a woman leading the assembly as a reverend or an apostle or any of that titles. They will not open the Bible to a part which is saying women should keep silent in the church. So they skip over that. If there is a, an assembly who teaches about compulsory tithes, paying tithes or script, things which are not scriptural, they will jump over the verse or the part of the Bible which is saying otherwise. But this program really delves into the truth of the word without skipping on any topic. And so if you are committed to this assistant or assistance, then we can be assured that you are in the light. You are getting the truth of the word. And that not by only learning, but also asking the Holy Spirit to guide us and to reveal to us the truth. In that way, you can be in the light. Now, if you're in the light, it is then your duty because there are so many who are in the dark. We are on a continent where Christianity is very rampant and very, it's all around us. But then there are so many who are still in the dark because they do not know the truth, the whole truth that they are supposed to know of the world. And so, if you know that you have been exposed to the truth, if you know it, then we should help others to come into that life as well. That they may not be overtaken 
by the coming of the Lord, that they might not stay in the dark. And so when you read yet again, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. But then before I read that, I also have a personal experience where one of my classmates, um, she's a Catholic. And you know, Catholics, they have their own teaching. They have something like Mary was a virgin till death. Mary still intercedes for us. And when you go into the truth of the scripture, you know that most of their teachings are not true. And so I really went into delve into scriptures with her and she was surprised to find out so many truths that I really want to really go into for the sake of time. But then you can see that people are not exposed to the truth. People do not know it. They follow what they have taught, like a tradition, like a ritual. And so it is our duty, our responsibility to also bring the hope to the knowledge of the truth and to pray for the guidance of the Lord as well. Because we can't keep it to ourselves. And so this reminds us is one great two. And now we even have um, the app, which is soft copy, which can be easily downloaded and utilized. So I finished with the second series by the grace of God. I had to, to speak to the about the last six courses, but by God's grace, I'm done with that. And so I'm looking forward to um, doing the one on the app as well and share it to others as well because there is so much that people do not know. People are ignorant. And so I'd like to end with 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Before that, 2 Timothy 2, 15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is the part I want to highlight, rightly dividing the word of truth. To rightly divide the word of truth. If you do not have that knowledge in you, if you don't have the spirit of truth in you, you cannot rightly divide the word of truth. And it's very important because once you're a leader in society, once people look up to you, it is easy to sway people into the wrong direction. And for that, you will be held, held accountable for that. It's easy as a leader to sway or to misdirect people, to put people in the wrong direction. As if you do not have the knowledge and the spirit of truth with you, and you are not able to directly or rightly divide the word of truth for others to know, then that is a wrong position to be in. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2 says, And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. What you have heard from what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So what you've heard and trust it to faithful men who will also be able to teach others. To pass that word on, the word of truth, to spread that into the population, into the assembly, so that the word of truth and the purpose of God will be established. And so we thank the Lord for our meeting this day. And may this very great opportunity to really delve into the scriptures and understand the word of truth, and to also portray and to teach others, may it be a blessing to us and a blessing to everyone who will hear from us. And also thanks to the organizers, to Mr. Webster, who has been encouraging us, encouraging me myself, and for really organizing this event. We thank the Lord and may his name be glorified. Jesus continue.